Andy Holzman, and um, we wanted to talk about safety and enmeshment and fusion. I've had the experience of having clients, Jerry, who've um, been in a relationship where they've been very close and very enmeshed in the relationship, but they did not feel safe. And from a family systems approach, I realized that can lead to um, problems. And, and it certainly can, and confusion as well, uh, because uh, a lot of people believe that enmeshment and fusion should equal safety. It should feel safe. And, and by the way, my name is Jerry Wise, and this is Andrew Holzman, and we're therapists at Family Tree Counseling Associates. And I want to welcome you to another one of our videos. And maybe on this subject we can help you with the aspect of enmeshment or fusion. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I remember you asking me the other day about that issue. And, um, and it, it seemed, in fact, and in fact, I was talking recently to someone about uh, why fusion or enmeshment, couples who experience that, um, feel so tight or so close emotionally but yet it doesn't feel safe and it doesn't feel comfortable and and I think from a family systems perspective it's not because fusion always means you gotta be me I gotta be you that's kinda what fusion means and so if, that's, if that contract is ever broken then there's some kind of consequence or disturbance or irritability or distance or something that happens if that fusion isn't maintained. So the fusion must always be maintained in a relationship um, for it to feel comfortable. So at any time it can kind of blow up. Right. And I see therapy as being kind of the idea of how do you find yourself? How do you try to find yourself within, whether it's within a relationship or just if you know you're working on yourself, and if you're fused with someone, it's very comfortable. It's very easy to kind of take on their attributes or want to serve them or give up, you know, some of yourself in this relationship. And people feel pretty comfortable doing that for a time, and then they get irritated by that. They get hurt by that because. It's not real closeness, it's a pseudo-closeness. It's, and if you try to do something different, if you have your own interests, if there's something you want to do that's outside of the system of the two, the, what you've created, then there's a lot of conflict, a lot of pain, and people going, whoa, you know, this is not what I signed up for, this doesn't feel good to me. And you you change the arrangement. Change the arrangement, and that's uncomfortable for folks. And I, and I think when maybe we should define fusion or mm -hmm. enmeshment a little bit. Sure. That because a lot of people may not know exactly what I mean. I'll bet they know what we mean by experience, but maybe we can kind of define what fusion or enmeshment, or we also call kind of codependency, mm -hmm. is like. I think it's a relationship where all of the emphasis is put on the other and not on the self. Fusion is a de-selfing. There's no me, there's only us. And that we-ness, there's too much we-ness and not enough I-ness. And that's kind of what fusion is, or enmeshment, or, and that um, uh, I live underneath your skin and you live underneath my skin. Right. And a lot of people see that as love as romance, as exactly. the way relationships should be, as evidenced in movies and in songs, and that feels wonderful, and that is romantic, and I think every couple experiences that, especially when they first get together, or most couples do, where they're finishing each other's sentences, and they're being intimate, and they're being close, and, they're, and jobs don't matter, and kids, if you have them, don't matter as much. Everything is kind of sacrificed to the experience of this relationship. And people love that, and they miss that, and they want to maintain that, but it's, there's a downside to it. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the downside to being joined at the hip, and, and not seeing that you can experience 
and take care of yourself. Take care of yourself in certain ways. I, I I've had clients who or, or being yourself. Being yourself. I've had clients who are, are. It's almost like the the Snoopy cartoon where he's a vulture, you know, just poised, waiting for the other person to, you know, kind of do something because they're scared of doing something on their own for fear of upsetting this relationship of right. of being yelled at or disappointing the person. So they're just kind of waiting around, as we would say, codependency. You don't have a self. You're kind of looking to the other to validate you. And right. it's kind of a difficult way to be in a relationship because then the other person really wants to, in my experience, have that person have a self. And, the, like you say, that safety is an issue because that de-selfing or that too much weeness or that enmeshment is is always precarious. It's always got to be worked on and be maintained. It can't, you just can't be comfortable where you're okay and I'm okay. Correct. Where you're a plus and I'm a plus. There, that comfort level is not there. There's, there's always a sense of there's only us. And so uh, the I-ness shouldn't come in. Since and you mentioned a very good point, Andy, about how our culture so uh, promotes fusion or enmeshment as equal to love. All the love songs, all the movies, everything says that's what love's about. If you can just get this oceanic togetherness, mm -hmm. then that's true love, and that's what we're all working towards. When actually, if you look at developmental psychology, there's only two times in life when that would be a healthy state to be in. And one of them is when you're an infant, you need that enmeshment with your someone who's bonding with right. you as a caregiver. You have to have that. That dependency is normal. Then I think of another stage in which you've just fallen in love, and it's that honeymoon phase, and that's kind of a very enmeshing right. time. But other than that, there's no other healthy time where that would be normal. That's not normal love. Normal love... I think of, well, and I think we're also talking about, maybe we define it as enmeshment is the 50-50 model. Um, I bring my 50%, you bring your 50%, we equal 100%. But isn't that a problem when I say that? Because that's an enmeshment model. A non-enmeshment model is I bring 100% and you bring 100%, and then we have a relationship. Mm. That's a healthy model. The other is I bring my half, you bring your half, and we'll try to make one person right. out of it. You complete me. You complete me, kind of thing. Right. And that always fails. It always, or it always will feel uncomfortable, right. unsafe, unsafe, and will break down. And it's, will break down. It's problematic. And most of the folks that we see come into our office are dealing with the sadness of not having that oceanic feeling. Of not having that enmeshment and that fusion and that what you know we we had that you know and this person changed you know six months a year two years fifteen years into the relationship things are different they don't feel that same connection which you know there are other reasons for that there are many reasons for that that people cut off but they they miss that big glob of connection that's how I think of it. Right. And it's really right. just, you lose yourself in that, and I think at a t at one person either gets very bored with that, or one person starts to grow, and they want to have a, a self, and again, that upsets the system. Either way, it upsets the system. And wouldn't you find that when you deal with couples, that many times couples have come because one person has decided they want to be more of their true selves. Right. And then that upsets the apple cart. Right. And then now we got to come into therapy because one person is starting to grow and the other person saying, hey, what happened to what we had? Right. And the other person wants to grow says, well, I'm not totally happy with exactly what right. we had before. And I'd like to mo find more of me. And I believe that we're also taught in society that... Once you have that initial enmeshment called the honeymoon phase of a marital, because there's stages of marriage life as well, mm -hmm. and the honeymoon phase, that's supposed to be the norm for the rest of the relationship, for the rest of your life. Well, that's a myth. 
and that people don't realize that a part of marriage is how can this marriage be big enough for each of us to grow and to change and to be who we are to become who we are and boy that's very threatening for a lot of people to think of that well, to think in those terms I think of that as true intimacy that you can have someone in your life who really starts to see that you're going to grow and that can accept you and it's and that's healthy it's healthy to have a relationship where the person brings up feelings in you and brings up issues in you where you start to see your life you, in a different way and you grow beyond some of the pains and injuries of your childhood and you start to have strength and in my marriage my wife helps me do that you know I, I she gets to me in ways that bring up feelings that that challenge me that help me work on myself and I think that's a good experience it's not something that you would look forward to and think about in terms of when you get married but it is something that does happen so you know at family tree we think well kind of almost the key point is the person that you marry or the person you're in a relationship with helps you grow by getting under your skin, by kind of challenging you, by bringing up things that you might try to push aside. And enmeshment can, and fusion can be that, where you're pushing it aside, you're just focused on the other person. You're just seeing right. their, their it attributes. Helps, helps you to avoid. Helps you to avoid. Helps you avoid you know, the kind of the experience of feeling things that non-fusion would have you feel. And I think that's a great point because enmeshment is denial. Mm -hmm. Enmeshment denies the self, denies the self's issues, and we just fuse. I become you, you become me. And so I don't have to look at anything. Uh, but that doesn't mean I'm happy, and it doesn't mean I know myself or I am myself. And like you say, our, the family tree model we have of marriage and thinking of that is how a spouse really does and has the ability to push our buttons mm -hmm. because the knots in my head fit the holes in their head. Right. And they really do push all of our issues because we're in a very close relationship. Whereas the relationship I have with the clerk at J.C. Penney's wouldn't do that because we're not in that kind of relationship. But a marital relationship will push all those buttons, and that that is a good thing. Mm -hmm. You know, we see that as a good thing. Right. For most people, they look at it and, and see it as a negative thing. Correct. Because society says that's a negative thing. And really, that's society going against the grain. I mean, it's going against what's reality. And uh, so we have to be careful what we learn from society about marriage and relationships and because it's all kind of gooey and fluffy and right. and puppy dog-ish and, and video, music video-ish. And, and, and don't you find that the less healthy a relationship in terms of your family of origin, the more fantasy that you have about having a great relationship or a fused relationship. So the more dysfunctional Excellent. family that you grew up, in, grew up in, you're going to really expect this relationship that you're in when you're married to be this perfect relationship. And of course it can't live up to your expectations. There's no way. And so right. you're disappointed and you're in pain and you don't know how to talk about it and you're trying for more fusion and more connection in the way that you know how. So you're going to over stress the system in that way. And I think that's a perfect point and uh, probably a good point to end on for our video, Andy. Uh, that right, the more dysfunctional our past, the more we'll idealize what we're going to get in marriage, mm -hmm. and it's all going to turn out beautifully. Uh, I hope you've been helped by our video today, and I want to thank Andy Holzman, who's a therapist here at Family Tree, mm -hmm. and, and Jerry Wise, thank you, another therapist at Family Tree. <laughs> and I hope this has helped you regarding enmeshment and fusion, and to think more about that. If you want help, give us a call. Uh, you can contact us, see us at www.familytreecounseling.com, and thanks for listening. Thank you.